Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is Spiro here, bringing you another deck guide today. It's been a while since I made one of these because I haven't been really seeing much new content until now with the new expansion coming out. So for those of you that don't know, um, there's just been a new patch or new expansion just came out for Gwent. Um, it's called the Novigrad expansion, and it gives you a whole new faction called the Syndicate faction. And it's a really, really interesting faction. There's a lot of different things about it. It's very, very different than any other, you know, faction we've ever seen before. Um, it has a whole bunch of new mechanics to the game. So I'm really excited to bring you this guy this guide to you guys um so let's go through the cards as always card by card and discuss what everything does and then we'll jump into a few games and show you guys this deck it's a really really it seems like a really really strong deck um it surprisingly seems well optimized for a day one deck like obviously as time goes on these decks will become more refined and you know people discover new synergies and strategies and this deck will probably become better and better as it re gets refined but as a day one deck this seems pretty decent and i'm going to discuss everything for you but one, one by one and hopefully you guys um, will enjoy this deck. So the first thing we have here is Gudrun and this is a very very strong leader ability So what this leader ability does is it gains nine crowns or gives you nine crowns and then boost an allied unit by any excess amount gained So you boost or you get nine crowns if you have let's say two crowns in your bank already and you do this You excess by two which means you get to boost an allied unit by two Which could be useful for keeping an engine alive if you want you could use it to keep an engine alive Or you can just take the nine crowns and there's other synergies that work very very well with this which we'll discuss in a bit there's a lot of cards that work really really well with this leader ability and this leader ability is extremely powerful you can almost think of this leader ability like harold um the cripple from skellige but in syndicate and i'll explain to you why in a bit um but basically this leader gives you nine coins i mean nine crowns which you can use to um spend on all the other cards you might have in the deck that are spenders and we'll discuss what those spenders will be soon um so the next thing we have here is tin boy and this is probably the most cuttable card in this deck. I'm not 100% sure on this card. It's sometimes really good and sometimes kind of meh. So the thing about this leader ability is you want ways to spend big amounts of crowns because you're going to be generating a lot of crowns with this deck. And you do want to have ways to like spend those crowns. And this is a big spender. Although his spending ability isn't that efficient. However, even without spending his ability, if your opponent has five cards on a row, it's basically like a lacerate that get, it exceeds his value. So basically what he does is damage all enemy units on a row by two, and then tribute eight damage all enemy units on a row, or on all enemy units in the whole board by two instead. So right off the bat, if you don't use the tribute eight, you need to hit five cards, and then he becomes a 14 for, t for 13, which is not not that difficult to hit five cards isn't that difficult to hit um and if you want to you can have the alternative ability so the way i treat this card is basically lacerate with a body kind of which is very over costed body it's it's like it's like an eight provision body that's that's costing you there but um and it gives you the flexibility of just nuking the whole board and spending your crowns if you need to um you could maybe cut this card for royal decree or something just to have a more um more conscious of time pulling your um, binky but overall this card isn't terrible but it's probably the most cuttable card in this deck um but yeah the next thing we have is binky and this card is nuts um this card if your opponent doesn't have a tall punish this card is very easily 20 30 plus points this card can go insane um so what this lead this what this card does is when you put it a range row make sure you put it a range row i've done that one incorrectly today um whenever you gain coins boost self by one for each coin gain which synergizes really well with gudrun because your leader ability gives you nine crowns and th that means if you play this card and then your leader ability you gain nine crowns immediately and that basically makes this card a um a 13 um for sorry not a 13 um a yeah, uh, sorry, it is a 13. A 13, 4, 10, which is pretty, really, pretty good. Um, so you play this card. Okay, so you play for four points. Then you gain nine crowns. So it puts us at 13. And then you can still spend those crowns on other things. So this plays for 13 for... Um, it plays for a 13 for 10 initially with your leader ability. And then plus all the other crowns you generate will obviously keep boosting this up further and further and further. Now, the one downside to this card is it's very vulnerable to tall punish. And you can't really play around tall punish because you can't play a leader ability last because then you don't get flying redanian. So you can't and you have to have stuff to spend your leader ability on. So you could maybe play this last if you're very scared of um, punish, but you need this coins early on the round. So it's the one downside you can't really play around tall punish. If your opponent does run tall punish, um this will get probably get answered but it's still very strong nonetheless and definitely worth running and a very very strong, solid play with your leader ability you play this card you play leader ability easy 13 points plus you have nine crowns you can do with whatever you want with 
Um, the next thing we have is the Flying Ordain, and another card that synergizes very, very well with Gudrun. So this card is Horde 9. On turn end, summon this card from your deck or graveyard to a random allied row. So what this card does is you play it in... Um, you, if you get to 9 crowns and you don't spend any of your crowns that turn, and you have 9, the Horde 9 will trigger, and this card will come out of your deck to the board. So it's like Roach, but with 4 points instead of 3. Plus, you could do it multiple times. If you get 9 cr crowns in round 1, and this boat comes out, and it goes to the graveyard, and you do it in round 2, and you get 9 crowns again in round 2, it will come out from the graveyard to the board. And then if you can do it in round 3, it, can, it keeps coming back over and over and over again, as long as you have the 9 crowns, which, like I said, due to the fact that you're playing... Gudrun has a leader ability and all the ways of generating crowns, there's a very good chance this will come multiple times, making this a really, really scary card if your opponent can't, you know, banish it or steal it or anything like that. So very, very strong card in this deck and really synergizes quite nicely. That makes this good, um, this Binky um, with an additional four points basically of tempo. So you can play leader with Binky for 13, then out comes Rodanian um, for 17 points, plus you have nine crowns to spend over on whatever else you want, which is an insane play to make and really, really good. Um, Philippa. So this is another one of our big spenders. So as I mentioned, we spend a lot. We have a lot of crowns getting generated in this deck. So we want things to, you know, spend those crowns on. And Philippa is one of those cards. If she steals, so what she does is spend a number of coins equal to an enemy unit's power, then seize it. So basically what that means, you can, if, if your opponent plays like a five point card, you can spend five crowns and steal their five point card for your own. If your opponent has a six point card, you can, you can spend six crowns and steal the six point card, the, the six point card of your own if you have six crowns to spend. Um, this card is especially good on engine cards. If you steal your opponent's engine card, which there are a decent amount of engine cards right now, if you steal an opponent's engine card, Philippa, it's insane. You can also steal other things. You can steal the Flying Redanian for a bit of carry over, because if you steal, the funny thing is, I've done this a couple of times, if you steal your opponent's Flying Redanian, um, then you can have two Redanians. And then every time you hit nine crowns, you have two Redanians coming out of your deck or graveyard, which is nuts. Um, so you can steal a Flying Redanian, you can steal an Engine, or you can maybe just steal like a high base strength card of your opponent, or not even base strength, but high point card, like an eight point card or a nine point card if you really want to. And this is a pretty solid play on that. So overall, decent card, not broken, but decent. Our next thing we have is Morils. <laughs> And this is a very, very strong card as well. So this is kind of like a Geralt that can't brick. Um, that's how I treat this card. It's kind of like Geralt that won't brick. So damage enemy by four. So it's initially an eight for nine, which is already very good. And tribute six destroyed instead. So that's insane. So if we have a very easy way to get cro um, crowns, we can use a tribute six and destroy any tall card our opponent plays. So your opponent plays their own binky or a, maybe an engine card that's too tall for you to kill with, or maybe this is armor or shield rather. Um, you can play this guy and just deal with any threats like that. And also obviously being tall removal. And even if you don't have the um, six tribute to support him, you can always play him as four damage and just kill whatever or damage whatever. And he's still a decent eight for nine, which is really, really good. Very, very strong card. Um, basically just a better, honestly, this card actually might be even overtuned even because the thing is, is Regis and Ifrit, if Ifrit's a 10 for a 10 for 8. This is a 4. This is an uh, 8 for 9. It's already better than Enrage Ifrit. So that's very, very strong. Although Ifrit's a faction is a neutral card. This is a faction specific card. So maybe it's balanced around that. But this is a very, very strong card. Um, next thing we have is Caesar Bilzen. And this card is another very interesting card. He's also possibly cuttable, but he helps you get a lot of crowns very easily. So what this guy does is trigger the profitability of adjacent units and then fee 3 boost allied units by two now typically you don't want to be using that that fee because it's very inefficient you're paying three fee for two boosts which is not really what you want so it's kind of like a last resort thing but the deployability is pretty useful and i'll tell you some ways this synergizes quite nicely um, when we get to those cards but this so basically if you have any card that has a word profit on it you can play this card in between two of them and get extra coins so he helps you build your bank up get you some profit um you can use him on things like um beggars you can use him on things like borsodi um you can use him on basically anything that has profit the word profit on it he's pretty useful on and he's quite good at generating your coins when you need them um so we'll discuss some more cards now obviously and the next thing we have is the boris and this is just a decent removal card so what this card does is damage an enemy unit by three and if you death blow in other words if you kill it gain three coins so that's not very difficult to reach. There's other ways we can line up. If you're having difficulty finding a three, there are other cards which we'll get to in a bit that you know you can line up threes for. So basically, if you kill a three, this card plays a three-point card that deals three damage. So six points plus three crowns, basically a nine-point card with removal value, which is really, really good. 
And there are ways we can use it to line that up, which is quite nice, which we'll discuss when we get to them. Um, next thing we have is um, is Kolkstein. And Kolkstein is an interesting card. He gives two profit, so he synergizes quite nice with Caesar. So there's another card here that gives Caesar profit, um, Kolkstein. And then profit two. So he's already playing seven with seven because of the profit two. And then you can spend the two um, crowns you get, or you can do you can do it multiple times even, and you get to purify units. And that's pretty useful against things like um, bounties. There are some bounty decks going around. And the nice thing about this is you can use it multiple times. So the, because it's fee two, you can purify many, many times you want. You don't have to purify. You can honestly just take it as, you can just take the two crowns and use the crowns for something else. But you could use this fee multiple times and keep purifying things. I played against a game where our opponent played um, Mange and he kept giving bounties on my side of the board and I kept purifying the bounties, which was kind of funny. So this could be useful. Um, it's basically just putting the deck as a 7 for 7 with um, the profit tag, giving us additional you know, flexibility with Caesar. So not a bad card, good way of generating money and also can be useful in some situations. Um, the next thing we have is Horus Borsodi and this is one of the two brothers. And what this card does is profit two. If Eowald Borsodi is in your graveyard, increases card's initial profit by two. So basically, that'll become four profit then if the brother's been played already. And you have to put a ranger, it's a ranged lock card. Um, you can spend the crown, so fee two, boost an allied unit by two. So basically, you can whenever you want, you can spend two crowns if you have it and boost any unit on your side of the board by two. Um, so basically you can use this to keep engines alive maybe, we don't run that many engines but there are a few that you might want to boost and it's just a good way of spending crowns if you want to, um, not bad. Typically you want to play this card in round 1 and keep the um, other brother, the damage brother for round 3. Um, this one is obviously a little bit better because removal value has a little bit more value than um, boost value but we'll discuss that now. Um, so this card is basically the reverse of that card, you played melee row first of all and if um, horse Bersay is in your graveyard, increase this card's initial profit by 2. So. Obviously, the exact reverse of um, Horst Borsodi. Um, so, Eovald Borsodi has another benefit, and he has the same thing. He said, Fee, you get to damage enemy by two instead. So, instead of boosting, you get to damage enemy by two. And this is a great control card. You can use this card to just remove any bodies your opponent plays because you can activate this Fee multiple times and just completely use as a machine gun and kill whatever your opponent plays, which makes this really, really strong and really, really scary. Um, the next thing we have is. Pickpocket. And this is just kind of like a way to fill up your bank. And the thing is, we want to be filling up our bank because we have the boat. And as many times we can get the boat out of our deck, the better, or graveyard even. Um, so this card just helps us fill up our bank. It's a 6 for 6 because it gives us 6 profit. Only thing is that 0 tempo play, so you do have to watch out for that. But it does help you fill up your bank, which means that you can get your boat out many times with this thing. This is very helpful getting the boat out. And not a bad card. And especially helpful for getting your bank filled up for the boat. Um... Also, not bad as carryover. If you can play this for carryover, it's possible. Sometimes your opponent might dry pass on you. At maybe if you have nine cards left in hand, you can play this. Get six crowns, which basically means you get three crowns of profit off of this, and then you play another card and get some more carryover with this card. So not bad card there. And this card, this is a very, very powerful and scary card. Um, Freak Show, very, very scary card. Very, very powerful, and I'll discuss what it does now. So, Insanity, give an enemy unit bleeding for one turn. If insanity was used, damage it by one instead. So what insanity means is that if the card, if you don't have any crowns, you get to, you, 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 he takes away points from his base strength. So in other words, if he is at six points and you have no crowns and you start using the, the, um, his fee, then he will damage himself by one and then damage the enemy unit by one. So he's kind of like a Skellige light longship, but without the cooldown. He can use all of his charges in one turn if you want to. So you can play this card if you have no crowns and use all of his charges and he goes down to one strength and you can use it as flexible removal. So which is pretty good. And also, he's also another coin spender. So in other words, if you have a bunch of coins left over and you don't really know what to do with them, you can use him for the bleeding. Um, so if you have... So one thing to note, if you have any crowns in your, in your um, bank, He's going to first use your crowns for bleeding before he uses it for damage. If you want the damage, you have to have zero crowns. Then you'll trigger his insanity, which is a very, very useful tool because you can use him as flexible removal. So if you have no crowns, you can use this guy, you know, kill whatever. And then obviously, if you want to keep using his ability, you can get some crowns. And, you know, instead of doing damage and instead of damaging himself by one, he'll instead give bleeding instead and he won't damage himself. Um, meaning you can just, you know, transform your coins into a one-to-one -one ratio of points. 
Um, next thing we have is Casino Bounces, and this is just a thinning card, and the six provision card, fee to summon all copies of this card from your deck to this row, and has the insanity tag. So in other words, the nice thing about this card is even if you don't have fee two, you can still use the insanity, or in other words, it will damage himself by two, and you'll pull out the copy from the deck. So pretty easy to get, very easy to trigger this um, condition, and good thinning for the deck. Um, the next thing we have is Payday, and this is very similar to what you might see in um, Primal Savagery from Skelliger. Damage an enemy unit by 2, death blow, gain 5 crowns. So, very similar to um, Primal Savagery in Skelliger. You damage enemy by 2, if you kill it, you gain 5 crowns, making it a 7 for 5 play. Not bad, helps you generate some coins, and helps you fill up your bank for um, your boat and other cards you might need coins. Um, next thing we have is Arena and Dregger, and this card is once again very similar to the Light Longship from Skelliger. Um, so this card is Fee 1, Damage Aim Unit by 1, Cooldown 1, so you can do it once a turn, and if you don't have any coins, so you use Insanity, in other words, it'll damage itself by 1, and Damage Aim Unit by 1. So the same as the Skelliger Light Longship if you have no um, coins. Also a nice way to spend coins if you need it, and not a bad card to help line up for things like Payday, and maybe um, Boris, or anything else you might need. Um, the next thing we have is Tax Collector, and this card again synergizes quite nice with Binky because, and she also synergizes, this synergizes very well with helping you build up your bank for your boat. Um, so basically every turn on ally turn end, gain one coin. So basically you get one coin every turn, pretty standard, pretty simple. Good synergy with um, Binky making this a two point per turn engine and pretty useful for helping build up your bank for your Redanian, the flying Redanian which you want to be doing. Um, the next thing we have is Sewer Raiders, and this is another thinning card. This card needs Horde 4 to summon, so in other words, if you have 4 coins, you can you don't have to spend any coins because Horde 4. Horde means you don't have to spend. So if you have Horde 4, summon a copy of this unit from your deck to this allied row, to this unit's row. So basically, you just need 4 crowns, and then you can spawn this card for free, essentially. Um, so you just need to build up a little bit of a bank, and then you can get this card up, which is quite nice. And the next thing we have here is Sea Jackal. This is a very interesting card. This card also plays the tour removal, um, same as Binky. Um, so what this card does is boost self by two for fee two, um, or Horde seven boost self by three instead. So if you have Horde seven, so in other words, if you have seven or more crowns, you can spend the fee two, and instead of boosting by two, it boosts by three instead, which means you're exceeding the one to one ratio, which means it's a very efficient way of spending coins if you have any, you know, if you have excess amounts of coins. So if you have hoard seven or more, you pay two and you gain three, which is really, really good. Um, that's a pretty efficient way of transforming your coins into points. Um, very, very efficient and not a bad card. Only thing is, the you can do it multiple times, which is quite nice, so you obviously can do it many, many times. The only downside being is obviously it does play into tour removal sometimes, so you do have to keep that in mind, but a pretty efficient way of transforming it. And here's a last card, very, very interesting. This card has synergy with um, Caesar, which we'll discuss in a bit. So basically, profit two. Um, so otherwise, you play it as a three-point card, you get two profit, so it makes it a five for for four and then if you have bonded in other words if you have the second copy of this card on the board um so you play this card if there's already a copy of it, you get profit four instead and the crazy thing with that is um which makes that makes the next this card a seven for three if you or seven for four sorry if you have the um bonded tag but the crazy thing is if you play caesar between both of these cards they both have profit four then meaning that caesar will basically give you eight crowns immediately which is insane that makes season a 12 for eight point play um because then caesar gets plus eight points plus is a four point body meaning he gets plus um basically and that's also that combo is insane with binky in some situations you could even combo with binky and then it's <laughs> a really really nutty play so this has some extra synergy with um caesar but also just a decent play on its own um but quite nice so that's the deck uh, i think it's a pretty strong deck we'll jump into a few games now and see how we do and then we'll discuss play by play what the deck is all about let us see what our opponent is playing okay so it's like a gudrun mirror of sort um okay so let's see how our opponent's built his deck um so we'll be a mulligan then is we'll probably start off by mulliganing away any thinners. We don't have any thinning cards. This is nice to have two of these in hand because they have a bond category. We do have a thinner, we have a thinner here. That's fine. This is fine. We might have too many coin givers. We don't, might not need the payday around one, but we, we need something to spend the coins, to be honest. We have a lot of ways to generate coins, not a lot of ways to spend the coins, really. But I think we mulligan this. We have too many. Okay, that's fine. It's more thinning. Um, I guess it's okay. We have some ways to spend the coins if we need to. Um, and I think we just open the tax collector. It's a decent, proactive play. It gets us crowns every turn. 
which is great, which you want, obviously. And then we'll probably play an Arena and Draga next. See. We want to try, obviously, get ourselves to 9 crowns. That's the objective to thin out the Redanian, um, the Flying Redanian on our deck. So we want to try not spend our crowns until we get to 9 at least. Might fill up his bank already. That would make Flying Redanian come up. Okay, it's a little tempo. Interesting. Um, okay, so that means we play probably the... We'll get these down now. I'm going to use Tactical Advantage on this to let them kill it, hopefully. And then we'll probably get out the other one, and that should fill up our bank then. We have four crowns of this, I mean we'll go to eight, and this will plus one, so we'll go to nine. It means we'll get our own Flying Redanian out. That's a lot of tempo. That's a big tempo play to make. Um, that fills up his bank. That was a pretty big swing from there. Interesting. So we'll play Beggar next. Pull up our bank, hopefully. He's spending coins. Fish tech for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Alright, okay. So that's an engine that we probably want to kill. Um, I can kill it with the bear. I think I need to. Oh, he's giving me a shield, okay. Makes it a bit more tricky to kill. So, what I could do then is I could do this. And then next turn, I could use the Fee on this and kill that anyway with Bear. I think that's probably fine. I need to watch out my tempo, because I am on bad coins, so I've got to be watch out. I've got to be mindful of this, although we still have a lot of powerful plays makeup. I might want to play my Philippa to steal his Redanian, um, Flying Redanian, but we'll see. I could also steal this Philippa, but I don't think I want to. I want to keep my Philippa for carryover on the boat pipes. So I think we're going to use this to kill this, Nick. We'll damage this and then we'll no, kill it with... Do not qualify for child care tax relief. Uh, that's also problematic. What I want to kill this or this? I guess I kill this. We kill this one instead. This is also carrier value potentially. And then this we can probably just kill with Morils or something. I don't even need to kill this, to be honest. Rhyme, the rhyme not, not though, go that long that we need to kill it. So I'll probably play the beggar next. The beggar overshoots me to spend two points. Could use this to spend two, or we could actually just use this overshoot by one, which is not the end of the world. I could also play Borsodi, play him, spend two, and get this out. I'm gonna get my Flying Redanian out. Hmm. We'll see. Do hmm. a bunch of crowns as well. So I think I'm gonna do this. I honestly don't. Is. And then I spend four because I'm going to be able to get another four next turn with this guy. We'll probably spend one more here. We'll spend one here. Get this out. Our boat will come out and we probably steal his boat with our Philippa. And then if this, we need more temper, we can obviously kill this from there. Obviously, he's playing a lot of good cards. So it doesn't really matter too much. I don't mind that. So what we'll do then, is we'll spend one coin here. I don't know tempo for this. I guess I could spend all my crowns after the... No points for it though. Hmm. So, I could play this. Plays for four, plus plays for eight. I'm gonna have to get my head. Um... I need to fill up a now then. Alright. Hmm. It's tricky. This is tricky. At least we've stolen this. But this is a problematic card. I can't kill this right now because I need tribute 6. Maybe I just accept losing a card. I mean, he's played a lot of very valuable cards. Maybe I accept going a card down, but I keep some carryover. And do some thinning. Maybe that's the play. Not the end of the world, because we have a bit of carryover here. Um, and he's played a lot of his good cards. I think I'm just going to do that. If you want to do this, he might pass, um, which is okay, I guess. Might pass, yeah. I mean, I won't get my own boat out, but sure. 
actually, yeah, I won't get my boats out. Okay. We'll fill these up our deck. We go minus two. But I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Because we still have a lot of our good cards. And we still have, um, we have East Boat now, which is great. So we've denied him a little bit of carry. We obviously, we've gone minus two, which does suck. But he's got, he's played a lot of very valuable cards. We haven't played that much valuable cards. And still get, um, a lot of carry from his stealing his boat. So we mulligan this because not very useful when we have this is to really pull this one out. Let me probably mulligan this. Um, okay. So. We want to find the binky. End up passing here. Hopefully we'll draw into binky. Um, binky obviously being one of our really strong cards. And maybe tin boy will be nice. We want to have our big spenders. But we don't get that much carry because we've lost a lot of our carry over here. Which is unfortunate. But we still have a little bit of carry over. Um, that's okay. It's a nice spender. This. Eh, don't really need this. That's a big spender. I would like to find Binky. Hopefully I don't brick on the Redanium. Yeah, I'm looking this. Okay, we got the Binky. Fantastic. That's all I want to see. Okay, we got the Binky. That's great. That is great. So. Let's see how much coins we have left. We have two coins left. So I want to spend all my coins before I play Leader Binky. So I think we play this guy next. Spend all our coins. So I want to spend all my coins right now, but I don't want to damage it because I'm going to be my target. I'm going to kill Maurice. Hmm. Hmm. Let me just do this anyway. If we lose it, we lose a little bit of points though. Um. We're just doing this. We lost a little bit of points. We lose a little bit of points, but sure. It still goes to 13, but... I mean, we get both redeemed. Line redeems out, which is nice. But sure. We'll probably just spend our coins next turn. Try to get more coins and keep boosting our binky up. He's probably going to have um, the same card, more reels to answer this, but sure. But we have two fire Danes up because we stole his one and we still have our own one, which is nice. Easy to forget about the eyes. Okay, that we want to kill. That needs to die. So how do we want to kill that? We can kill it with Morils, but I can also kill this with Morils. Also kill it with this. Not the most efficient way of killing it, but sure. Uh, but also overshoot my profit by two, which is annoying, but I think that's pretty important to kill. And we could play the pickpocket, which will boost Binky up by a couple of points as well. Actually, I should have just. Yeah, that was a miss. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah. I kill this thing. They killed our one. Fine. So we'll play the pickpocket here. Boost the binky up. The pickpocket here is placed for 12 points essentially. Alright. Makes us go by up to 6 and our profit goes up by 6 too. Um, we probably kill this with more reels. We need say a profit to trigger on this guy, which is only this. So it's not gonna be amazing, it's gonna be an 8 for 8 if Binky sticks, but Binky's probably gonna die, we'll see. Hard. Got two profits. Yep, yeah, so you play this now. We use the tribute to kill his binky. Love to hear back from here, so not very helpful. Really much else to kill this matchup anyway. Mm. And then we'll play the cork stain for some profit and then trigger the profit with the Caesar. So we're a couple of points up, but he still has a lot more crowns than us. Rolls not gonna do much because we don't have any artifacts. Still gives him a bit of Profit, but sure. Okay, so he's damaging this, so he doesn't have total removal, it seems, which is really good for us. Yep. We'll play this. And 
Inky obviously turns this card into a 9.47, plus we have Profit with Caesar, which is great. So we'll use the Profit with Caesar on this card. We don't have any other Profit givers, so not as much value, but they're still playing for 8 points with Binky, so still 8 for 8, not bad. And it doesn't bother me too much. Get some crowns there. So you got how many crowns you get from that? Six crowns, got maximum amount. Alright, four. So we'll play this then. Some more crowns, plus boost up Binky, which is great. And then we probably play this as a lacerate, kind of. We'll use the points on this. We'll have one crown left over, but it's probably fine. Anyone can be bought. Only questions. The other Mosetti brother. Yep. We'll play the Sea Jackal here. Um, not really much else to use. Our Fion may as well use on this. And then we'll probably play this as like a last trade in a way. Okay, so our opponent gives up. Alright, not bad. Not bad. So we went down a card because we lost coin flip, but our opponent over, over um, committed to round one, so it didn't actually end up matching that much. So, okay, let's see what we queue against here. Okay, King of Beggars, interesting. So, what kind of deck will this be? We'll see. Okay, so we lose coin flip. Again, unfortunately, we mulligan away one of these because of thinning card. We don't want thinning cards, and except for the one, obviously. Um, probably mulligan away. We mulligan, yeah. I guess the hand's okay. Hmm. We mulligan Sea Jackal. Flip is better. Not a whole lot to use with this, but it's a way to spend my crunch. I might need. Sure. Okay, we'll keep this hand for now. Um, we'll start off with the tax collector. Hope it survives. Um, maybe at TA people don't run tool punish that much nowadays, except for obviously for reals. But reals takes time to get the crowns, so I think it's okay to do this. I keep this alive. I have to tell because I know what the meta is right now. Obviously, when the meta settles, I know what cards people run, so I'll know if this is correct or not. But this one, yeah, it plays only one. Um, so I want to kill that. The question is, how do I kill that? I don't have an efficient way of killing it. I guess I could kill this in four turns. But then I'm losing my crowns, makes it difficult for me to get my B9. We'll help one. Brother. Do that. Get six crowns in our gray in our um deck with that. Very low temper to make sure gotta watch out for that. Um I need another two more crowns. I can get my boat up with this, which is great. Or this. Low temper though. Or even this. Um, so we want to get, obviously, we want to get to nine crowns. Because the quicker we get to nine crowns, the quicker our boat comes out. And that's pretty good for us. Um, we do have to watch out on temper though, because we did lose coin flip. So it is always something we have to keep in mind. Which I'm just, so it's probably playing with um, bounties then, I think. Probably playing with bounties then. Okay, so in that case, we probably play our um borsodi get a bunch of coins up we can't just spend the coins now because we need to have nine at the end of the turn to get the boat out so the boat will come out here which is great then we can start spending our, our crowns and try to get out of the round so it looks like the game is quite close we only five points of our opponent but we have nine crowns saved up basically now that's the future so i think now we just try to spend our crowns i think so we'll spend our crowns now tina bouncer Figure its ability, and we'll probably try gal around by spending our crowns. Getting out of there. You typically do want to spend your crowns um, because it's not efficient to keep your crowns. The carry over you get from them only hops. And if you're losing round one, your opponent's just going to drive past you round two if you've got a bunch of crown carry over, meaning you're not going to get that much value off them anyway. So I'm seeing a witch hunter. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be pushing this or not. The thing about witch hunters is in the long round three, they might be scary for me, although I do have a way to, you know. 
play this to purify the bounties, which is nice, but... I'm not sure if there's a push here or not. Hmm. It's hard to tell, because I don't know what the deck of my opponent is running. It's hard to tell. I think I'm gonna pass, I don't know. It's really difficult to tell, because I'm not sure. Maybe I should have played this first, played for one point of carryover. Maybe bait out some removal. Or should I should actually play this, just one card at least. Um, but it's hard to tell what I'm supposed to do against matchups because I don't exactly know. It might be a Witch Hunter deck, luckily we do a Purify, so the thing is if we are playing it's a, a, a Witch Hunter deck with bounties, we can purify the bounties with Corkstain. So it's not the end of the world if we are against a deck like that. Um, so Earvolt's also great. Um, so I think we mulligan away this. Day is great. Payday is okay. Payday line this we need this to line up for this. We might again payday. Um so we're missing Binky, which really feels bad. But let's see how we do. Um so we have profit here. We have profit here. So we've got two profit givers at least for Visa. So we need one and we need one in to stick at least. We wanna kill that. Or we could steal that. That's pretty good to steal, actually. It's an engine. So I think we just steal it. We use our leader. We don't have Binky, otherwise we play this with Binky first. I think we steal that. It's an engine. Pretty good value. Stealing an engine is always a very good value. Um, because now we're gonna start earning the crowns instead of him, which is great. I think he's leader charge, so he might want to do it back. Might see him doing it back here. I'll never be imprisoned again. He does it back. Um. I think we play this then, and we'll do that, and then next time we can kill it with the bear, which is great. Then we get our own one down. A woman's place is in the oh, in all of them. That'll be our more seals target, I think. Don't really need to worry about that just yet. So we'll play the Boris now, kill that. I'm gonna keep my coins because I want to be able to get my Redain Knight's Min or Redain Boat out next turn. Okay, that, that, that needs to die. <laughs> that needs to die. That's a problem. This is a big problem. Um, so how do we kill that? I guess we did like this, right? It's a bit more difficult now for me to actually get to my 9 crowns, but we'll see. We still have ways to get profit, which is great. Ah, long ships are over. Okay, so we'll play the tax collector now. Try to start building up a crown collection again. Let's get us to nine, very important. And then we play. Okay, Sodi doesn't really matter. So we'll play the we'll play the um Kulk's day now. And we'll make a little pocket there so that we can play season next between these two and fill up our bank. definitely worth killing um i think i'm gonna do this oh wait oh, i must click uh i'm supposed to do with this oh purify it's the same thing actually yeah it's okay. yeah that's fine that works too if we purify that okay so coincidentally that actually ended up being okay so i could have killed with this but i ended up just purifying it only spending two fees actually saves me some fees which is great so we'll do this um this falls up our bank because it triggers both profit abilities and then we play this and we trigger this so we can get one crown open because this is going to give this one extra crown and then the boat will come out. We don't want to obviously overshoot our crowns. You've got to watch out for things like that because sometimes you overshoot your crowns. So we spend one crown there so we open up one slot in our bank to get the extra bit of crown there value which is great. And now I think we can play this. And I'm pretty sure we're always killing Binky. And then we have quite a few points left over here, which we should be fine with. Okay. So he's doing a big play with that. We can do the same thing if we want to. Um, 
Actually, no, we can't because we don't have any Ram of Tribute, but it's fine too. I need to play that, make that play actually. I always just use this as a last shape, which is good enough on its own. Good luck. Not too much, right? So, we can't use the tribute on this because we don't have enough points for it all, but we still have enough points where it doesn't really matter. So we'll play this, and we'll damage this, and then we obviously could spend all our crowns or whatever. Alright. Alright. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay. So he also built like a mid, looks like a mid-range type of deck, but we were able to simply outpoint him because our deck has a lot more points it seems. Okay, let's see what we queue against here. Calvate. Hmm. Okay, so a non-syndicate leader, finally. <laughs> we lose coin flip again, unfortunately. Um, but we'll see how this goes. So we mulligan away. Double attack click is kind of nice, but it's bad against orcs. But, uh, um, I think we'll mulligan this. We have a lot of coin generations, I think. We don't need this. I think we've got enough coin generation. Um, don't really have many spenders besides this guy and this guy. Um, could break if I mulligan though. I guess we keep the sand. Um, we're gonna have a lot of coins. We've got a lot of coins this round, it seems. So we'll open with this. Sometimes I run the I'm not gonna open up with TA. I'll just leave it at four. Um, we'll play our tax collectors. Hopefully, we don't get auxed. Hopefully. A good bear target. I think we're gonna kill it with bear. Look back at Baron Obel Pikeman, I guess. Kill it there, and then we play maybe our um, second tax collector. If we don't get orcs, <laughs> hopefully no orcs. We'll see. So we'll play orcs here. Oh, not orcs. Ah, we'll play the tax collector here. Qualify. Hopefully we don't see an orcs. Hopefully there's no orcs here. And we're getting two crowns a turn, which is fantastic for us. Which means we should be able to get out our boat very quickly. Our opponent plays here. Is choosing something. Oh, okay, fine for us. So we can play the Indregadana, and out will come out our boat. Seeing as we have got nine crowns, which is fantastic for us. Um, so we are generating two crowns a turn. So we need to spend this. We should probably play the pay the freak show next to start spamming, um, start spamming bleeding everywhere because we don't really need our crowns for much else. Also, we do want to thin this out. Maybe we thin this out first. Maybe we thin this out first, then next time we start spamming clown shenanigans everywhere. Yes. Okay, I don't mind that too much. So, we'll do this. And pay for the extra copy. And then we probably just play clown next to start spamming, yeah. you know. Big show nonsense everywhere. Okay, so we go. The nice thing is, we get because of this, we go into next round with four points of caravan. We get to keep our crowns, we get to next round with four points of caravan. So there's a consideration to push here and bleed. I think we do want to push here and bleed. And so we do have four points of crowns of caravan, which we won't be able to utilize if we drive past here. So I think this hand's really good. What are we mulligan though? Are we mulligan this? We have the clown to line up anyway. This is a proactive play, which is decent. I guess we could keep the sand. Okay, so we'll start off then with the thinning cards because they have deploy horde five. I mean, for horde four, we have four, so we can get the thinning out. Um, if we can line up, we can get another nine crowns and get our boat out again, which is great for us. Getting the boat out as many times as we can is fantastic for us. Going for me. Um, I can't damage things. It's a lot harder for me to do stuff. Um. How do we get the profit for that? Don't really have a way to get the profit unless he plays a two for us. I mean, we could do this. Okay, we actually still could do it. We could do this. Then we could play Ear Vault. Use Ear Vault to set up payday, and then we should be able to get the, we should be able to get the boat out of our deck, which is great. Main the more times we can get the boat out of our deck, the better it is for us. So, I think we do this. We might play Earvolt next, set up our, um... Set up our payday. Great. You got to keep peasants on a short mm. leash. Yeah, we also could pass here if we wanted to. Hey. 
Hmm. You see now if I play if I play Eervolt on this, he might slave him trade and then I'm pretty sad. Maybe I just take a pass here. Take three crowns of carry over. It's dead. I would like to get the boat out again, but it's getting a bit risky. I think I'll just pass here. Fairly? Pass here, go into Longish round three, we have three crowns of carry over. He's got three points of carry over because of Albrook, so that's kind of the same. Um, that's nice for a long round. I think we have enough crowns. Do we have enough crowns? We should have enough crowns. I think I'm probably I'm always mulling in that. A lot of crowns. Yeah, if I forgot this, I don't need this. So, we're missing. Not missing much. This, this hand's okay. This hand is okay. So, there's a seer. We want to be spending our crowns to get better binky value. So I think we play this now. Play this first, actually. More efficient this way. We can play this, then we play this guy. Spend all of our crowns, we get better binky value. Max kill the Sarah or something like that, probably. We'll see. We shall see. Something. Ah! Uh, durability. Okay, that's a very good fill up of targets. I need crowns for that. We'll help one. I'm not going to spend any crowns because I want to steal that. So I'm not going to spend my crowns with this guy. I'm going to steal this with Philippa. It's a pretty good steal at Philippa. And then I will play Binky Leader, I think. I'm not gonna use this guy to, to shoot stuff because I want the five crowns. They killed him with Serret. And now I get to steal this to Philippa, which is great for me. Um, so, spend our five crowns to steal this, which is great. Pretty good value with that. Um, stealing an engine, obviously, being really, really good for us. And then we'll play Binky Leader next. It plays into Leah, plays into Pizza, but can't really afford to play this at the very end. I don't think it does Pizza on this if he wants to, or Leo on this even. We all have secrets of one kind. Okay, so that's probably going to be my target for Morils. We'll play the Binky now. Really and we'll use leader ability. <laughs> and then we have Boat coming out, which is great. Probably going to kill that with our um, Morils. We need him to play a 2 though. I guess we could make a 2 with this. Make it two with this. Then a best head for the short lead. Spears is fine. Um, so we'll play the Morils here. Love to hear back from play the answer. tribute. Kill that. Place of 14 is not bad. Plus the nausea could trigger. Um, then we play maybe. I think we need to play this to line up for a two somewhere. So I'll play six. Then I'll use his I'll use his tribute to just nuke the board. I think. Let me play Payton and use the excess we have on this. Sometimes I orcs. The late orcs. Um, so I think we play this. We'll fill up our bank yet again. And we'll boost Pinky up as well, which is fantastic for us. Now Pinky gets another plus six, although obviously she might get Leo or Peter, but we'll see. Um, I don't think you run Leo and Peter in the same deck, but he probably at least has Peter. Um, so we'll play. Run here. Yikes. Okay. So that means we play. Um, I want to wait as long as I can with Tin Boy. So I think I'm going to play this. I'm not going to use the charges. I'm just going to play him. I don't think he's got any more removal. I think. The more bodies on the board, the better Tin Boy is. Okay. We'll play Tin Boy now. We'll trigger the tribute, nuke the board. Use the payday next turn. Let's see what we use the payday for. Great. Okay. But we play the payday onto a one. And then we trigger this. By one point. Wow, that was quite a close game. Quite a close game, but 
he had a pretty stacked hand. That was a pretty insane hand. Um, but yeah. So there you have it. Um, pretty decent deck, um, I think. And I hope you guys enjoyed the guide. Um, that's going to be the guide for me today. I'm going to keep trying to update date you guys with more guides and more videos as soon as I have decks to give you guys. But yeah, I think this deck is pretty solid. Um, I think it's comparable to Harold the Cripple from Skelliger, kind of, in a way. It has a similar couple of finisher power. Um, very, very nice deck. Very fun to play. I hope you guys enjoyed the deck guide. And if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe. And if you have any questions on the deck, feel free to ask me in the comments below. And or you can ask me on Twitch. I stream every day. My link for that will be in the description below. Feel free to come by and ask me live. I'll answer your question there if you guys want any. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the guide. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye, guys.